Hello, and welcome to another episode of Bare Bones Wargaming, a show with no bells, no whistles, no frills, just a man, a camera, and his game. Today's episode, we are going to do a playthrough of a new game just came out a little while ago, Pavlov's House, The Battle of Stalingrad, sticking with my Stalingrad theme. This is designed by David Thompson and published by Danverson DVG Games. Alright, so basically, this game, you are trying to defend Pavlov's house. Just what it sounds like, a critical historical structure, well, historical today, of course, but a critical structure in the Battle of Stalingrad in 1942. Okay, And basically, you have several things that you have to consider here. There's actually three maps in one. You have to consider way over here, the kind of operational picture where you've got supplies and artillery and anti-aircraft guns. You've got to consider the tactical situation as the Germans close in on you. You can see the three different colored tracks there. And then over here, on the very end, you have... Let me just go ahead and move it. It'll be easier that way. You have the house itself with the different rooms and the different sides of the building, which are all color-coded. Okay? And you begin the game as the Russians with four counters in... Pavlov's house. Okay, so we'll talk about things here as always. Immersive process, because I think that's always best when it comes to doing a playthrough. So, let's get cracking. Alright, so the first thing, there's pretty simple basic turns here as far as the order goes. First thing is, the Soviets have their card phase. Uh, then, you do the German movement. And then you can do your tactical movement with your units. So, to begin the game here, I draw four cards off the deck. Now, the cards, as you can see, have two areas to them. Okay, They've got the name of the area. They're also color-coded as well, too. And on the map board um, over here, you can see it's also color coded. So for example there you can see the anti-aircraft gun it's green. If you look up here you can see the signal one it's brown. Okay? Or kind of like that tannish I guess. Uh, brown is actually more like the sapper colors. We'll get to the sappers a little bit later on. Okay? So the cards are split. Alright? And you have different things. Okay? Some of them are command things. Some are artillery. Okay, some of them are the all-important Volga military flotilla, which gets your supplies across to Pavlov's house. Because one of the things you have to do in this game is you got to keep your men fed and strong. If they starve, you lose. Okay, now, the Russians get, the Russian player, solo player here, gets four cards. Okay, and you can choose three of them to play. You choose either top or bottom half. You cannot choose the top and bottom from the same card. So for example here, I'd have to pick to play the Volga um, flotilla or to play the 267 anti-aircraft battalion. Okay? Alright, so let's go ahead and spread the cards out here at the bottom of the board. See if I can get a good shot of that. Yeah, there we go. Alright, and again, I'll just go ahead and start to do some things just to show you how this works. Now some things require prerequisites. For example, the Volga flotilla you're going to need to have the supplies in the staging area first. So, a little bad luck there drawing that card because I don't have any supplies yet. That requires a different card to get. Okay. Alright, so, just to kind of again get this moving, and again, like I've said before, I don't pretend that this is supposed to be an ultimate strategy or anything like that, or optimal strategy as actually the word I wanted. I'm just trying to show you how all the game mechanics, okay? For this, all right. So I'm going to go ahead. and I'm going to play this card. What I usually do for myself is I put them all out and then I slide them down as I use them. That way I know it's been used. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and play one of the artillery cards. Now, when you play one of the cards and you play it so that it affects this part of the board, the operational part of the board, as I like to call it, if the space is empty, you can see there's two spaces here with the artillery icon. You can go ahead and place it in that space. Now, spaces can get disrupted. We'll see how that happens here in a minute. So uh, alternatively, what you can do with on any card is if the space that you're interested in using is disrupted, you can go ahead and use the card to remove that disruption and get it back basically in working order. Okay? So I'll go ahead and play that for one. 
And then I'm going to go ahead and play an anti-aircraft gun for the 1083rd. So I put one in the spot. And you can put it in either spot. It doesn't matter. Um, so long as, of course, that the symbols match. So one thing I like about the game is, you know, if you're colorblind, you don't have to worry about colors because you've got the symbols on everything, too. So I think that's really good and really nice, quite frankly, that somebody thought ahead to do that. And the other thing I'll do is, for the last one, since I can't use the Volga, Volga blah, blah, flotilla, I'll put one up here in the 267. So I've played my three cards and placed my units there. So that's the card phase. Now, mighty German Wehrmacht. All right, every turn, the Germans get to play three cards, okay? German cards are a little different. So we'll go over them here one at a time and we'll see what the black buzzards are up to as uh, a phrase from Sergeant Rock. I mean, even though this is the Eastern Front still, so, I like to do, what I like to do is I just like to lay them all down, one, two, three, and then just flip them one at a time, um, partly because it kind of gives some suspense and tension, and also just because it's easy for me to remember, oh, hmm, did I draw two cards already? Did I draw three? Okay, I know, I have my three right here. So, first card. Okay. First card is we're going to attack a building. Now, attacking the building itself is pretty straightforward. First thing you do for that card is you got to figure out what side of the building you're attacking. Okay. And again, things are color-coded, but they also have numbers here, too, to try and randomly decide what this piece of artillery is that's going to strike the building, to try and weaken the building, because, of course, that will cause your troops trouble as the structure gets hammered. Okay. So I rolled a 5, so that means, according to this card, we are going to be attacking the purple side of the building. Okay. Now, once we've decided what part of the building it is, and again, it's decided by die roll, then we're going to roll that many dice that's indicated here on the card. In this particular case, this is some serious artillery. We're going to roll five German dice. And for the Germans, for this particular game, I got these nice gray dice. Failed Gras. There we go. Okay, now, the building itself... Let me roll the dice, and then I'll show you the next part of this. The building itself begins with every single one of the three sections with a strength of six. Okay, so let's zoom in here on the house itself. All right, so you can see we've got three tracks here where the green cubes are. There's also these green markers, but I didn't particularly care for the green markers because they kind of covered, got a little too close to the numbers. I like the green cubes better. Um, you can play with the markers, you can play with cubes. The game comes with both. Okay, So as you can see, we start out here on the 6 mark at every single one here. And again, we're attacking the purple side of the house. Now those 5 dice we rolled, if any one of those dice is equal to or greater than the number that is the current defense factor, you lower the strength of the building on that side only. So the German roll here on the purple side of the building as you can see there it was, we do have, let me zoom in, we do have a six. So we're going to take that green marker and pop it down to five. Okay, Only one of them needs to do it, and it doesn't drop more than one level per attack. Okay, So that's how you attack the building. Now, if the building, as the building gets reduced, there is a way to try and patch it, so to speak, fix it up, brace it up, however you want to put it. And we'll talk about that when we get some sapper tokens a little bit later. Let's see what our second card is. Ah, oh, oh, speaking of black buzzards, here come the Junkers, JU-87s, with their deafening, frightening sirens. Now, those attack over here on the operational board. Okay. Now, generally speaking, what you do is, for each one of the planes attacking, in this case... It is the circled number. It indicates the number of planes, which is three. This number here is its defense. Notice the little shield symbol there. So we're going to roll three times to attack these spaces. Now, if you have anti-aircraft guns, you can open fire with them and try to shoot down some of these planes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of the anti-aircraft guns. Okay. So for each one that you open fire with, you roll two dice. You roll the two dice and compare it with the defense value 
of the Stuka. And in this particular case, I am out of luck. Notice I rolled a three and a two. The defense value is four. In order to eliminate one of these bombing runs, I would have to roll four or better with one of these dice. So I failed. Okay, so that's not a very good start in that respect right there. Now, I could have used both anti-aircraft guns had I wanted to, but again, for the purposes of this video, I just want to give you an idea how the different things play, what happens, etc. So I'll save that other one. Now, whichever one is used, you remove that marker and put it back off the board, and of course, you can bring it back out again if you play one of those cards. All right, so now the Stukas are going to come screaming in, getting three dice each time. So I'm going to roll all three, and then I'll show you how we resolve the tack. Um, that's my best impression of a super siren. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the dice and put them where they belong. Okay, on the map here. Let me go out just a little bit. There we go. Okay. So I rolled an eight. I'm sorry, a 9, that's another was my strong shoot, a 10, and a 15. So let's take these in turn. So now what happens is, if the space is empty, like this 9, this 9 is empty here, or no, it was 8, I was right the first time, Five, two, yeah, 8, this space is empty, you put a disruption marker on it. Now, if a space currently has something on it, like up here, this 10 already has an artillery piece, you remove the marker, okay? But you don't put a disruption marker, you just put down, or you take away the marker that's there. And then last but not least, up here, I'm zooming in on this for a reason, I'm gonna put one into the 15 space here. Okay, now every time that the signal area gets hit, any of these spaces 14 through 17, you have to add to the discard pile one of these fog of war cards. Okay, now the fog of war is bad for the Soviet player, for you, because when they're drawn, basically it uses up one of your cards. So for example, when you draw four cards, if you draw two fogs of war, guess what? You only get to take two actions, because remember, you can't take two actions on the same card. So you would only get two actions instead of three. It is theoretically possible that if you get all seven Fog of War cards into the deck and draw four at once, you will get no actions with your cards. Okay? So that is extremely dangerous. So you have to be careful. And now I've got bigger problems there with the Stukas. All right. So the Germans are sticking it to me here pretty early. And, well, you know what? Sorry. We're going to zoom back in. Do you know why? Can you guess? I'll bet you can. Sorry, not to sound like Mr. Rogers. I'll bet you can. That's right, because there's another Stuka. So I'm glad I saved that entire craft gun. Now, there's only two of them this time. Okay. Again, the number of Stukas attacking is the circle number here. But the defense factor, usually, I'm almost sure every single Stuka has a defense factor of four. So I will open fire with my entire aircraft gun. Let's see, I'll do my best impression of an entire aircraft gun. Ah, this time much more successful. Now, for every die that you roll that is equal to or greater than the defense value, you destroy one of the flights. So notice I rolled two fours here. That means this, there was only two to begin with. Bye bye So, the Stukas were driven off by the gallant defenders of the Soviet working people. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I just can't, I can't do it. I'm oh, sorry, I just can't. Just... Communism baffles me just as much as fascism or any of those other extreme systems. I never... Nah. Okay. Workers' paradise is an oxymoron. So, that is the German phase. We are completed now. So, actually, not too bad here, okay, for the Soviets to begin with. The building did take a little bit of a shot. We do have some disruption, but hey, you know, it can happen. By the way, those Fog of War cards can be removed. We'll talk about that a little later. Now, for the last part of each turn... We're going to focus on Pavlov's house itself, okay? Now, at the beginning of the game, you start with four counters in Pavlov's house, okay? And with the counters, each counter has a name on it. You can see Pavlov himself. There are special designations here. They give them special abilities. And then each of them has an attack value and a suppression value, 
Okay. The attack value can be used to attack infantry based units like riflemen, scouts, and machine gunners. It cannot be used to attack tanks. When tanks show up, you got to get the anti tank guns into the game. And of course, um, we'll talk about that whenever we get to that point. So the first thing you do is you can take three movement actions. Okay. And basically, what you can do is you can move people from the reserve to any empty space there. If someone is there, like say this guy was already here, okay, for example, then what you can do is you can move the individual from reserve and either move him back or you can go ahead and I can move Pavlov into here and move him to any other empty space in the house, okay? So, so I'm gonna go ahead and deploy some of my folks here. Now, of course, I don't, there's nobody here yet, okay? So what I'm gonna do just to be prudent is I'm gonna take my three movements and I'm gonna put one person on each side of Pavlov's house, okay? And we're all deployed. Now, basically there's nothing else to do right now because I got nothing to shoot at. Uh, at this point in time. Oh, 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 I know I forgot something. When I was setting up the game before, I knew I forgot something. And now I realize what it was. It was bugging me. I was like, wait a minute, I've forgotten something, haven't I? Yes, I have, as a matter of fact. I forgot, <laughs> bad thing here, I forgot to set up the two initial food and water tokens and then 10 suppression markers. Five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10. Okay, so I do have something I can do. My apologies. I knew there was something bugging me when I set this up. Moral of the story, when you're setting up the game, even if you've played it like three or four times already, go through the setup carefully. Okay? Now, what I can do here is I can use the suppression value of a counter. So, for example, this gentleman who is in space number two on the purple side of the building, uh, Chernigolov. I can go ahead and his suppression value is a 1. So what I can do is flip him to exhaustion, because most actions exhaust the counters, and take one of these suppression counters and put it in the color-coded box that matches that side of the house. Now what the suppression markers will be used for is when German infantry units, infantry only, show up, riflemen, scouts, machine gunners, I can use those suppression markers to basically make sure they don't get deployed onto the middle map that I showed you a little bit ago. In other words, one of these three color-coded areas here, green, red, or purple, okay? And I'm gonna do the same thing here with uh, Glushenko, and again, he will be exhausted. Now, while counter is exhausted, it cannot take an action, and it cannot move. So like next turn, I could not swap him out with somebody else, either elsewhere in the house or from the reserves. Okay. One of the actions you can do is a recovery action, which will flip the guys back to their front side. We'll talk about that a little bit more here later. Now I could use Pavlov to flip, but I'm not going to because I have my reasons for that. So I'm going to leave him sit there and that's that. So that is one complete turn. Now, let me just show you here real quick, because I mentioned the machine guns a little bit ago and the anti-tank guns. You do have weapons here in the house that you, where you can put into the house. You can call from headquarters and stuff for them. There's mortars, there's anti-tank rivals, there's an anti-tank gun, and there are machine guns. There are also individuals who have unique characteristics to them, like these ones here, this individual here with the A, he can be used to man an anti-tank gun. Uh, this individual here, can be used to man a machine gun, okay? You only got two guys to man the mortar though, so you gotta be careful with them. If you lose them, you're screwed because you need two guys to man a weapon, okay? So, and you got a lot of other folks that you can call into the game as needed and as possible with the cards. Okay, so let's move on to the second turn here now. And I'll draw four more cards off the Soviet deck. Let's see what we get this time for this turn. Okay, so, all right. All right, well, let's do some of these guys here, and we'll get um, some of this stuff taken care of. All right, so let's talk about here. Let's go first with the 62nd Army Headquarters, okay, the command post here. Now, 
once you get the hang of this, there is a nice card that outlines everything that each card can do. Come back a little bit. There we go. Okay. So you can see up here, here's the 62nd Army Command Post, and it tells you what you can do. Big thing is to remember is most of the actions that happen, if, it's dis if the place is disrupted, it has one of those disruption markers on it, you cannot do the action. Okay, So I'm going to start here with 62nd Army Command Post, Okay, because I can get resupply. Now resupply is a way to get stuff into... Pavlov's house, that stack you just saw a little bit ago with the suppression markers and the food. What you can send is a couple of different things into there. You can send ammunition, you can send food and water, you can send some sappers, yeah, some guys to build your building up and also potentially cause the Germans problems as well too. And you can also send in first aid. First aid counters can be used Whenever you guys take a casualty, a.k.a. they're going to get removed from the game, you can use it to protect them. So, I'm going to go ahead and play, whoops, sorry about that, the 62nd Army Command Post card. And we're going to go over here to the staging area. And I'm going to put up to five tokens of any combination like that into the staging area. Okay. Now again, way up here at the top... If this had a disruption marker on it, Space 18, the 62nd Army Command Post, I would not be able to do what I'm about to do right now. So, I'm going to put one food and water, because we always need food and water. I'm going to put two sappers, one first aid, and some ammo into that space. Okay? Alright, now... I'll tell you what, I'm going to go ahead again for purposes of instruction, because that's the point of my videos here, is instructional. The second card I'm going to play now is going to be one of the Volga cards, just to show you how it works. Okay, So, I'm going to play the bottom half of this card, which is the Volga, okay, the Ruber Flotilla. And basically what I do is I take whatever three markers I want, and I move them onto these three spaces here. So I'm going to put some food and water out there, and I'm going to put... One sapper, one first aid. I'm going to leave the ammo, because right now i still got a boatload of ammo in there, and I don't have any kind of weapons right now either, okay, at this point. All right. So, we've gone from getting our supplies to moving them. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use the top part of this card for the 13th Guards. Okay. Now, the 13th Guards is right here. You can see them. Here, again, if the space is disrupted, you cannot do this, but you can use these cards. For example, this did have a disruption marker on it. I could play the card to remove the disruption marker. And if I had two of them, I could remove the disruption marker and then get moving on other things here. Okay. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to call in some reinforcements, bring them to the house. Okay. Now, every marker in the game, except for the starting markers, has at the bottom... You can see here some circles, okay? This particular one here has one yellow circle on it, okay? Other ones have varying values. When you play the 13th Guards command post, you can deploy to the house six points worth of reinforcements, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull in some guys just to give you some idea here of things that are different. I'm not going to do what I usually do, uh, which usually, quite frankly, the first thing I do is get this guy in, because he has an attack value of four. But notice, he has six circles, so it takes one card just to get him in there. He is the resident Soviet bad beep! Okay, he is. He's just, yeah, he is the one bad mother Russia guy in the game that can really cause the Germans some problems as far as their infantry goes. But again, to show you how the game works, I'm going to go ahead and bring this guy in. Okay, So he cost me three of my points. You see the three circles. Now F. F is basically, he's a spotter. He can call in artillery. That's part of the reason I'm bringing him into the game. And when you bring him into the house, you put him in the reserve. So I spent three points there. I have three points left. I'm going to go ahead and bring in this guy here. He also has three circles on him, whole of. And again, you can see he has an attack value of two, no suppression. So he's half of Chekhov. And again, he's kind of like semi. He's like bad beep light. Okay? So that's how I can do that. 
Okay. And again, three cards. I used the different parts of the card. Use the top of one, the bottom of another, and the top of another. And the fourth card is just wasted, which is unfortunate. So you do have to kind of, you know, weigh out your options here. So knowing the deck can help you in this game, quite frankly. Both the German and the Soviet deck. Speaking of the Germans, here we go. One of those trace. Let's see what they're up to. First German card. Oh, look, it's our old friends, the Luftwaffe again. Oop! I forgot to remove the anti-aircraft gun last time when we fired on them. So, there's always little detail things with this. Even after several plays, I was catching myself with little things. Don't forget the little things. The little things mean a lot, so to speak. So now we're going to have three bombing runs here by the Luftwaffe. So let's see what they're going to do. Hopefully not hitting the signals too hard, because if they do, I will be getting more Fog of War cards. End of the game. So one. That's a twelve. Two. That's actually a nine this time. Three. Okay. So again, you put a disruption marker in any space that is empty. So one here in the 12 space, one here in the 10 space, and then one here in the 9 space. Now, just for argument's sake, if this had actually been an 8, these dice have been an 8 instead of a 9, what you do then is, if you end up rolling a space that already has a disruption marker on it, you go up to the next highest number. So if all these were filled, you would just keep going and going. But you got to be careful, because if this gets two disruption markers on it, you lose the game automatically. It's kind of our only sudden death. Well, I shouldn't say the only, but one of the big sudden deaths in this that can happen. So that's the first card. Next card. Ah, okay. We're going to deploy some people finally. So this is a scout card. Well, we're going to try to. So anytime you get units, tanks, infantry, whatever, first thing you do is you roll a die you got to find out where it is exactly they're supposed to be going, okay? So for this scout, I rolled a 5. So, I have here in the game, of course, you have markers, okay? For the machine gunners, the riflemen, and the scouts. There they are. And when you place them, make sure I'm getting a good shot of this. You place them at the beginning of whatever track it is that you rolled the number for. Okay. So up here, we're looking at placing this guy on track five. Okay. If all these spaces get filled and there's another German unit that needs to move in, there's like four things here, you lose the game. That basically means they enter the house, they took the house, you know, stick a fork in you and that's it. You know, here's some nice parting gifts for you. Turtle wax for shining your turtle. Okay. Now, each one of the German counters has two values in it. The top value is basically their combat value. Uh, they can do suppression and stuff. That comes a little bit later. The bottom number, the shield again, is their defense value. That's basically what you need to roll equal to or higher to get rid of that. Now, before you put infantry, again, infantry, not tanks, on the track, if we need to jump over here to the house, so bear with me. If you have a suppression marker, in the correct color area, you can roll a die and try to keep that unit from coming into play. So I do have one suppression marker, so I'm going to go ahead and use it. You put it back into the stock, and you roll a number of dice equal to however many suppression markers you spent. If I had 10 in there, I could have rolled 10 dice, but I'm just rolling one. Now granted, I need a 5 or 6, which makes this tricky business. But hey, look at that. Lady Luck smiling on me. I rolled a six. So what happens is, this guy doesn't get placed. It's like he never existed. He has been suppressed and not put onto the track. Now you can see the value of this because as the game goes on, and there's a bunch of Germans on those tracks, suppressing them, keeping them off the track, can come in mighty handy. All right, the last German card. Oh, we're gonna attack the building again, okay? So I'll go ahead and let me zoom out a little bit since we're gonna attack the building. Let's follow the procedure. Step one, roll a die. Find out what part of the building we're attacking. We are attacking the red part. 
up here. Okay, now the marker is currently on the six space. Okay, the attack value of the card is a four. So now we're going to roll four of the gray dice. And if any one of them is six or higher, it will reduce the building. And there's the roll. And yes, it is. Let me go ahead and make sure you can see that. As you can see there, there is a six in that group. So we're going to slide the cube down to a five which basically now makes it easier whenever the Germans attack the building to hurt your people inside is basically the long and short of that. Okay, now, Soviet counter phase. Okay, so now I can go ahead and move my units around in Pavlov's house. Now again, you get three moves, but you can't move any exhausted guys. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and... I'm going to deploy... Oh, there's no Germans on the map yet. So I'm just going to go ahead and bring some of these guys into play here. I'll put this guy over here. We'll bring this guy... I'm going to put him in the radio because then I can call reinforcements that way too. Not as many, but I can. And then I got a funny feeling about the red side, so I'm going to put this forward observer over there. So that was three moves that I was able to do. And now I can take my three actions. Okay? Now, one of the special actions that you can do is a command action, okay? See the C here on Pavlov. Now, what that means is, if I use a command action, he can rally, flip from exhausted to fresh, three guys in the building, so long as they don't have one of the Cs. And there's only three guys with the C value in there. So, command guys can't rally other command guys. They can't help them. Well, recover is actually the word for the game. That's kind of rally, I guess, is more squad leader type. So, so first thing I do is I'm going to flip Pavlov to his exhausted side. I'm going to mark him with one of these game markers to show that he has taken an action. And then I'm going to flip the two exhausted guys to their front side that I'm choosing here. Now, I could choose up to three, but I only have two. Notice I'm marking them with a red block because that tells me they cannot take an action. When a unit recovers, and recover can either be from exhausted to fresh or removing a disruption marker, when they recover, they cannot take another action that turn. Okay? All right. So, let's see. i got two more actions here I can do. Let's go ahead and... Well, there's not much to do right now, unfortunately. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and flip this guy for the second action and call in from reinforcements from the house. Now, you only get two points when you do that from the house. So for those two points, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in this guy and put him into the reserve. So he'll be ready to go next turn. Okay. Now, again, the other two guys, I really can't do anything with them because I don't have anybody to shoot at. Okay. Because their first numbers there, like this gentleman here, his first number is his attack value. Okay, second number is suppression. Well, I can't even add any suppression markers because he doesn't have a suppression value. So, unfortunately, and again, I'm just kind of goofing around here and stuff. There's optimal ways to do things. But for right now, I really don't have another action to take. Okay, I've kind of maxed myself out. So I'll remove the action markers and remove the red cubes. Whoops. And one runs away from me. We're ready to begin the next turn of the game. So let's come out and let's see what kind of command cards I get this time. One, two, three, and four. All right, so I got command post, I've got Volga, I've got some, some other things. Oh, I got some sappers this time. That's cool. Okay, all right, again. Just to show you how the game works, not necessarily optimal strategy, but just to show you the different moves, the different options here and stuff. I'm going to go ahead and first things first, I'm going to play the Volga Flotilla card. So what that basically lets me do is, it lets me take the counters that are here and move them to Pavlov's house. Okay, So I'm going to move the food and water, the sapper, and then I'm going to go ahead and move in the first aid kit as well. So that's my first action. Okay. Now, for my second action, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to play, um, I'm going to play this card here for the Sapper, okay? So what you can do with Sapper Battalions, when you play them, you got really 
couple of things that you can do. One thing you can do is, and it must be a sapper marker in the building, and I do have one right here, okay? That's why I did the Volga Flotilla first to get the marker over. So you can either raise the value by one of the defenses, like I could raise this from five to six in the house, or, and I'll zoom in to show you this, if you look here at the end of each of the German tracks, you see that there's sapper markers there. I can go ahead and for a sapper action, I could place one sapper marker there. What happens is when a German unit steps into there, you attack it with three dice. Basically, it's booby traps, demolition, that kind of thing. Okay, so, um, but this early in the game, I'm gonna go ahead and reinforce the building. And I'm gonna move the red side back from a five to a six, because I had a funny feeling about the red side of the building. I know I sound like Lieutenant Dan and, and uh, Forrest Gump, right? Got a funny feeling, but it's true, okay? And then, let's see, I got two of the 267s, but I also have the 13th Guards rifle, so I could bring in some more reinforcements into the house. Well, I'll tell you what, let's do that, just again to show you how it works. So I got six points to do that with. Now, normally, I would bring in Mr. Chekhov PDQ, because if the Germans start piling up, or when they start piling up, you're going to need them. But just to show you how the game works here, I'm going to go ahead and spend my six points this way. I'm going to go ahead and buy these two guys here. Okay. Now, notice they both have an A on them. Okay. And that's four points. See the two yellow circles on each. They will be able to fire an anti-tank rifle or an anti-tank gun. Okay. You need two guys to do it. So you got to keep that in mind whenever you're buying stuff and building stuff here and stuff and such. And I'll go ahead and also with my last two of my six points, I'll get this anti-tank rifle and put it into the house. Okay? So, that's it for the Soviet card phase. So let's do the Germans here again. And let's see what the Germans are up to this time. Or as Black Adder would say, the Germans. Alright, first German card. Oh, they're going to try and bring more troops into here. They're going to bring a rifleman. So we roll the die. We roll a die. And it's a six. So they could come in on the purple track. Now again, I do have a suppression marker. But for the demonstration purposes of this, I'm going to hold that one. So I would place him on the first spot on the track. And again, if all these are full and you have to place another unit, boom. They have taken Pavlov's house. You are up on sanitary waters without proper means of propelling yourself forward at that point. Second German card. Oh, attacking the building again. So again, we gotta find out what part of the building. Yeah, roll a two, it's the green part of the building. The attacking value is five, so I roll five dice, looking for at least one six. And the Germans did manage to get one six. So we reduce the defense value from six down to five on that side of the building. And then last but not least, the last German card. Oh, look, it's our friends, the Luftwaffe again. Okay, two planes this time. I have no anti-aircraft guns. So let's just see what they're gonna go after here with their attack. Attacks, I should say, because there's two, two planes there. If I can keep the dice in my hand, the dice are like revolting. All right. So this time I rolled a 13. So I'm going to put a disruption marker, totally disrupting the anti-aircraft position now. So I wouldn't be able to put down an anti-aircraft gun there no matter what. And then the second one is a 9. Ah, so perfect example here. So here we go. All right, let me zoom in here a little bit. So if the space is currently occupied by a disruption marker, you go to the next highest space. Well, the 10 is also occupied. So now I'm going to actually put the disruption marker on the 11. So this one goes to 11. <laughs> if you don't know that reference, look it up. <laughs> and that's the end of the Yunkers attack. Okay, now back to the house. Okay, so first I've got my three movements. All right, now... I don't have any tanks yet. So actually what I should have probably done was do two machine gunners. You know what? Let me do that. Let me just switch this out because it's basically going to be almost the same value. Yeah, let me do the machine gunners because that's a better example than the anti-tank rifle because we don't have anybody yet. No tanks at this point. 
All right, so let me just do that. Okay, so now I can move, okay? So I've got three movement actions I can do. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna move these two guys into position. Now one of them can take the machine gun with them and set it up. So that's one movement action, second movement action. Now we're ready to rock and roll on this side of the building, okay? And let's see, for my third movement action, um, let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and move this guy onto the green side of the building. There, that's my three movement actions. I'm going to go straight, okay? All right, now, my actions here, combat action-wise. All right, so first action I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and flip this guy, Pavlov, back over so that he can help recover people next turn. Now, if I want to fire the machine gun, it takes both guys, so it does require two actions to do that. So I have, will have to flip both of them to exhaust it. Now, i got two choices with the machine gun here, okay? I can either go with the top, the first number, which is the attack number, and I can open fire on anybody that's in line of sight. Line of sight in this game is really simple because it's basically, it matches the color. So purple, a guy in a purple box can shoot anybody on the purple tracks. A guy in a red box can shoot at anybody on the red tracks, etc. Or I could take suppression markers and stack them in the box for that side of the house, okay? For this one here, since I have a target, I'm gonna go ahead and use the attack value. Okay, so we have these riflemen here that we just deployed a little bit ago. So there they are. And now I get to roll two dice because that's the attack value of the machine gun. I rolled a six and a two. Six is higher than four, so bye bye riflemen. And I've cleared that area out. But I have exhausted those guys and used up all my actions. Now, there is a way to get a fourth action. The way to get the fourth action is to get all three of these counters into play in the house. Okay, there's three of them that have Cs. And then you can actually add a fourth action so long as they're all there. And yes, they can be exhausted. I checked that on Board Game Geek. Someone asked that before. All right, so real quickly here, let me do one more turn because we're coming up to the resupply card, which basically deals with the food. And then we'll go from there. Okay, so I'm going to get my four cards here. Lay them down. Okay, and now you can see again, I got another Fog of War card, Curses, all right? Let's see. Well, I can't do anything with Sappers. I mean, I could bring more reinforcements into the house. You know, that's what I'll do. I'll play the 13th Guards, and I'll bring in the Soviet bad beep, and put him in. So that's one action. And then I'm going to clear over here. I'm going to use the artillery card to clear one of the artillery spaces from the disruption. And then I'll use the second artillery card to put an artillery piece in there because I do have a forward observer in the building. Okay. Although maybe I want to, maybe would have wanted to wait on that. Who knows? All right. Now, when you get to the resupply cards that are in the deck, Okay. They have two sides to them. Let's talk about the first side. Now, the first side, basically what happens here, when these come up, you need to have enough food to feed your defenders. If you end up with not enough food, you have to remove pieces from the game. So for every five defenders, you got to spend a food token. So in the house right now, let's see what I got. In the house, I have three food tokens. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten individuals. So I have to spend two of these to keep them all fed and at full strength. So I still have one left over, which is good. I'll have it for next time. Okay. So I have supplied those guys. They're in good shape. Now, once you've done that, then you flip this card over to its red side, the storm side. Okay. And the storm group. Now, storm group is a special action that can be taken by using the 62nd Army Command Post, okay? The first thing tells you the color, okay? In order to take this action, there need to be no German units, tanks, or infantry in that area. This tells you your fighting ability, how much you have to score with rolling dice. Basically, for each Soviet counter you commit, you get to roll one die. So if you roll, or if you commit six guys to it, you get to roll six dice, okay? Some guys do give you bonus dice. And then if you do it, this is how many victory points you get at the end of the game. Now this will stay up here in the storm group spot until the next supply card comes out. So at any time when you have the 60 second command card, 
you can go ahead and initiate that action, provided there are no Germans in the entire color group. Okay? So that's how the resupply card works. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple, but you got to be careful. You got to make sure your people are getting fed. Okay? All right, let's see what the other two German cards are real quick. And then I'll give a few thoughts here and we'll call it a day on this video. So, oh good, we have a sniper card. Now this is a different card we haven't done with yet. So the sniper card, first we roll, see what side of the house we're attacking. It is a four. So we're rolling for the red side of the house. Then we roll a second die to determine exactly what space the sniper is taking aim at. Okay, so let's zoom in here on the top part here of the house, okay? Now notice, all the spaces have numbers. This is a one, two, three, four, five, and six, okay? So I rolled a two. Now there's nobody in the two space. So if there's nobody there, you go to the next higher space. There is someone there, okay? Now, once you've identified the space, you roll four dice and compare it to the strength of the building, which is a six. So if there is a six, this guy is toast. And there is a six. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. I lost them. Oh, wait! No, I didn't. Why? Because I have my supply token. Okay, let me zoom back out. Sorry, that got a little fuzzy, didn't it? I have this first aid, not supply, I'm sorry, first aid token. You can use first aid tokens to avoid casualties, things like that. So I'm going to spend this first aid token, and he's fine. The bullet just missed him. Skimmed the top of his head. The breeze blew back his hair. Okay, so he was saved. Not by much, though. But you know how it is. Sometimes better lucky than good. And the last card, ah, is a tank. A PZ-3. So, we roll to find out what track. It's going to be track 6. Okay? Now, unlike infantry units, you cannot suppress these. I do have a purple marker. Okay? If you look over there at the house, you can see there's a purple marker. But, can't do anything because it's a tank. Tanks cannot be suppressed. So here comes the tank, rolling in, and at some point, it will take a shot at the building, okay? So now I'm done down to the Soviet actions here for this turn, which I could go ahead and do. So I guess maybe I knew what I was doing, trying to get that anti-tank rifle before, huh? <laughs> Perhaps, all right? Ah, let's see. Well, let me quickly do this, and then I gotta end this because this is getting kind of long. So. First things first, I get my three actions. So let's go over here to the house. Let's focus on the house. So first thing I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna move this forward observer over because I do have an artillery piece. So that's one action. Second action, I'm gonna bring Mr. Chekhov in. I'm just gonna bring him over here for my second action to there. And my third, third, sorry, third movement, not action, my third movement. And I think that's it. That is all I will do for movement. I don't really see any need to move anybody else. No. Okay. All right. So now let's take our actions here. Okay. So first things first, I'll take an action with Mr. Pavlov here and I will flip one, two, three counters and I will mark them with cubes to show they cannot take an action this turn. My second one, I'm going to use the forward observer because he's on the purple side here to open up with an artillery piece on this tank. Now, I am wasting things here in a little bit, a little bit because each artillery, you get to target two units in that space, okay? Uh, or in that color group, I should say, in the line of sight. And I only have one tank here. So I'll remove my artillery I counter from the 10 space, and I will roll the two dice. And again, I need five or better, and I roll a five and a one. So bam, bye-bye, Panzer three. okay? And he's exhausted. That's my second action. So for my third action, I'm going to flip this guy here and move a suppression token into the green space there to get ready for next turn because things are going to start to pick up here pretty soon. Okay. So basically that shows you all the different things you can do. The only things I've left out is uh, I didn't have a German assault action at all. They're in there. There's not that many cards in the deck. Basically, the infantry get to attack uh, or hit the building doing a suppression action. Uh, the um, enemy 
units. I'm just making sure I didn't mess that up. But I don't think I had any. No. Okay, sometimes the artillery units and stuff, you can basically suppress the defender instead of attacking uh, the building. You have to watch that. And then the tanks are basically used to attack the building itself, to try and reduce those tracks down to three or less. Or actually to three, and then things start to happen to the defenders inside the building itself once you reach the three point. Okay? And then the storming thing... Again, um, the rule book is well laid out and pretty well explained. I had a handful of questions, but nothing serious, nothing earth shattering, nothing difficult to it. Okay. All right, so this gives you an idea of how Pavlov's house plays here in the early going of the game. Now, my intention is, after I finish this particular game, uh, I'm going to play around with, there are some optional cards that you can play to make the game more complicated. Uh, tactical cards that the Germans can use, okay, that, um, right here, let me zoom all the way out, it'd be probably easier to read, like right flank, and armor strike, and infantry strike, and, you know, marksman barrage, air superiority, and I'm going to play around with those, and then my plan is to make another video using those tactic cards for the Germans. So, hopefully this gives you a good idea how the game plays, um, and again, you know, there's lots of good support on Board Game Geek if you're looking for answers to questions. But the rule book is very well done. So a lot of it, you know, you just have to kind of look through, look at the rules and read them carefully. There's little things, like the Luftwaffe attacks the first time through I was missing, that when you hit the signal spaces, you have to add a Fog of War car. So there's little things like that that you always want to be on the lookout for. Okay? So this is Tim Korchner from Bare Bones Wargaming saying thanks for watching. And we'll see you next time with a little more tougher version of Pavlov's house. Thanks for watching.